controversy. The Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, which grades speech freedom on campuses as green, yellow, and red, like a stoplight, uh, our school is rated as yellow, uh, which is in between. Not perfect, could use improvement, but not terrible. As a Board of Trustees member, are you committed to the protection of free speech? And if you are, what will you do to ensure that? I will ask Mr. Thompson that. Well, I, I, absolutely. I mean, I, as a lawyer, I certainly uh, understand the um, uh, concept of free speech and, and all that goes with, uh, with that, our Constitution, and et cetera. So definitely we'll do that. Um, I don't know the details of your organization and what happened there, but uh, we will, uh, eight weeks is a long time, and it does sound to me like that may be excessive. So let's take a look simple. at that and see if we can reduce that time limit. There is certain time necessary to provide the opportunity for you know, proper planning and, and uh, protection, et cetera. And so uh, I think we need that. But uh, I'm all for uh, student organizations or any organization on campus being able to do something here on campus and not have to go elsewhere. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sonsky? Yes, protecting free speech is, is, is paramount. Um, I think what when I heard the question, I, I would want to understand the, the policy that's currently in place for how this decision came came to be in terms of timing, um, and I think what I would want to understand is is kind of the value behind the policy. What are, what are we trying to say when we structure a policy that says you need, need to have a lag time or a certain lag time? So so what I would want to understand is what is the current policy of the, the board of trustees, and what if 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 we need to look at modifying that, mm -hmm. what makes sense with a framework that protects or enhances the, those rights of free speech as much as possible? Okay. Uh, free speech has a two-sided coin, obviously, um, or multi-sided coin. Multi -sided. <laughs> it's more like a die. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, well, perhaps we'll clarify this after the after Great. The break. Um, great. Uh, so here's my next question um, while we're going on uh, constitutional rights. Uh, the Virginia Tech shootings clearly show that a deranged gunman can do a great deal of damage in just a few minutes it takes campus police to arrive on the scene. One would argue that a potential victim has the, is the only one with the potential to stop a shooting rampage before it turns into a bloodbath. However, Pasadena City College doesn't even allow the trained and post-certified police officers that are here on campus carry firearms, let alone a student with a concealed carry license. Would you consider revising either of these policies? I will ask uh, Mr. Thompson. Yeah. We have addressed this question a, a number of times, and uh, the opinion of the board has been that uh, with the relationship we have with the Pasco Police Department, the promptness, the quickness of which they appear, we do not want our own officers to be armed. Uh, there are pluses to that. There are also minuses to having them armed because uh, you have the risk that some uh, uh, person who goes uh, uh, estranged can uh, steal the weapon or take the weapon from that person and becomes even more dangerous. And so uh, I think that uh, we have decided that uh, uh, it is better not to have our um, uh, officers uh, carry weapons on campus for that very reason. And as I said before, it's especially so, because we have a great relationship with Chief Sanchez, the Pasco Police Department, they get here immediately, quickly, and uh, so far we're prepared to proceed down that road. Thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. Mr. Slinsky? Yeah, I think, I think there is a delicate balance between um, promoting safety and perhaps risking uh, an incident. And so, what I would advocate for would be reviewing the policy but I also would want us to think about, is there other alternatives besides just arming with lethal force? Um, I, I'm, what comes to mind is, would it make sense to have officers with some kind of maybe taser ability that isn't lethal force? Um, and that, that's what I would advocate for is, let's, are there third alternatives that we haven't explored between not having guns and having lethal force? Thank you very much, Mr. Slensky. Uh, my next question is a little bit more lighthearted. <laughs> uh, what do you uh, What do you do for?